Hello, welcome to a slightly different view of the cave. Um, if you've been following along, you might think, wow, I can actually see Mr. Taylor now. Hopefully you've been able to turn up the brightness on those other videos and get them looking good. Lighting a room is another thing I've never had to consider before with making videos, so we're gonna get better as we go along. Sadly, nobody's perfect, including me. What we are gonna talk about now, that's not lighting videos, is our Seagull program. The first couple of videos that we've had um, since we went to online learning have been revising step one of this uh, kind of this map that we're following for mastering the first five keys and scales that we need to be really fluent in to play our trumpets, baritones, trombones, euphoniums, all our brass instruments. So uh, in the middle of our seagull diagram, this is the one that some students suggest looks like a butt. I strenuously disagree, it is clearly a seagull. Um, right in the middle there, we have C major. I'm looking at the trumpet version. I'm gonna speak trumpet language for now. Obviously, low brass people, yours starts with B flat major because we start off with the, the notes of a B flat scale with B flats and E flats. Trumpeters, your life is much easier at this point. We start with C major, which has no flat notes, no sharp notes, and to play a scale in C major, you just start on your low C and work all the way up to high C. And that's a C major scale. I probably made you work through this sheet. Seagull scales step one, which starts with the C major scale, but in smaller sections, five note scale, C up to G and back down. Uh, it does some other important patterns that you should be uh, fluent in playing. The triad, C, E, G, E, C. Uh, that's Do, Mi and So. Um, we have hot cross buns, Ode to Joy and Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. These are just some tunes that I hoped would be very familiar to people that they would be able to hear in their head. And then as we go along through the other steps, we are going to um, transform them so that they match the other keys that we need to learn. On the back of that sheet was an eight note scale starting on low C. Typically, if you play in a school band and they say, okay, trumpet players, we're gonna start off with the C major scale. This is what they're expecting. Eight notes, we call that eight steps an octave. You would play from low C all the way up to high C and back down. The rhythm pattern on this, long, short, 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 long, short, short, and continuing down to the end, that's a pretty standard scale pattern that we would use. So hopefully nothing too crazy yet. Then we have the Italian word arpeggio. That's my terrible Australian accent version of it, but it's something like that. And that follows the triad pattern. Do, mi, so. For trombones and baritones, that's B flat, D and F, first, fourth, first. Um, trumpets, we have C, E, G. And then we add on the high octave, that high C for trumpets and the high B flat for trombones. We add that to the top. Do, mi, so, do, so, mi, do. Once again, you've probably done this in class by now. Um, if not, it's the same as the triad, which you will definitely have done, but with high B flat added to the top for low instruments and high C added to the top for trumpets. Then you've got a little round. I'm not gonna sing it in the correct key because I can't sing uh, a low F, but it would sound a bit like this. Ta, ta, ti, 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 ta, ta. Ta, ta, ti, 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 ta, ta. Sound a bit like that, um, and that's going to get changed into all of the different keys as we go along as well. The last bit is what you probably haven't looked at yet this year, unless maybe you're in year 9 or 10 and we were able to breeze through all the other introductory stuff, uh, which is the harmonic minor, melodic minor, and minor arpeggio. Now here's the most important thing to know. Major keys or major scales typically have quite a happy sound to them. They have an evil twin though. So major, happy. The evil twin is called the relative minor. What that means is that to go from happy sounding C major for trumpets to the evil twin, which sounds a bit sinister, a bit sad, um, you need to keep the same sharps or flats, but start on the sixth note of the major scale. 
So in our case, for C major, this should be pretty straightforward. No sharps or flats to begin with. Uh, keep that the same. Work out what note number six is. C, D, E, F, G, A. You're going to start on an A and play up and down an octave. So same notes as a C major scale, but starting on an A. The most common form of minor scale, though, so we've gone from C major, happy sounding, to the relative minor, A minor, note number six of the major scale. Um, the most common form of minor scale is called a harmonic minor. And when they add the word harmonic in there, what they want us to do is they want us to add a sharp to the seventh note of that new minor scale, the sad sounding or the evil sounding one. So what this gives us is instead of trumpet players, and once again, I'm not singing this in the correct pitch because I can't sing that low, instead of trumpet players playing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, you would change the seventh note of that new minor scale, which is the G, you would change it to G sharp, two and three. A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp, A, and you get kind of this I don't know, snake charmery sound. Da, 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 at the top of the scale. So overall, we're still in a minor tonality. There's a big word, tonality. We're in a minor tonality. We've got this kind of sadder feel rather than happier. And we've added in a sharp that makes it sound snake charmery. Uh, so you write in any fingerings you need to. You play the scale starting down on low A. And you go, wow, I sound like a snake charmer. Or, it, this is often used in movies, it's a very evocative kind of scale. Um, then, you have the melodic minor, where they add a sharp on the sixth note, as well as the seventh note of that um, basic minor scale. So, you've started with major, you've worked out the even twin, the relative minor, which is note number six, up and down. Then, you've sharpened note number seven, because you were doing a harmonic minor, and you want to sound snake charmery. Um, and then... On the way up, you're now going to sharpen note number six as well. So, A, B, C, D, E, F becomes F sharp, G becomes G sharp, and then you hit A at the top of the scale. Weird thing, on the way down, you have to get rid of those alterations. Do not sharpen them on the way down, only do it on the way up. Here we go again, me not singing the right pitch. A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. And then on the way down, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. You go back to just the notes of the C scale, get rid of the added sharps. Finally, you have the arpeggio. Um, just like before, it's note number one, note number three, note number five, and note number eight of those minor scales. And because you are only messing with sharps on notes number six and seven, wouldn't matter whether you played the harmonic minor or the melodic first, the arpeggio would be the same either way. Right, so we are now all caught up. Year six onwards, you need to be able to play everything on the front of the step one sheet. This is C major for trumpet, it would be B flat major for low instruments, and on the back as well. Okay. Next we are moving around our seagull diagram. We started in the middle. On the left wing, we have step two. This is the top of the left wing, and we need to add a flat to our scale. So low brass people, you already had two flats. In B flat major, your B notes were flattened and your E notes were flattened. Now, for step two, any A notes will be flattened as well, and the name of this for you guys would be E flat major. For trumpet people, Step two will be F major. Mostly the same notes as the C scale, but you need to add one flat. And in this case, I don't know how well you can see the sheet music right now, but the one flat that gets added at the start of each line is a B flat. It's on the very middle B line. Doesn't matter if you're playing a high B or a low B. Any Bs get changed to B flats, first finger. Right, that, that is the only difference. Now, all those things that we did before, five note scale, do, re, mi, fa, so, fa, mi, re, do. That's still going to sound the same, but we are starting up on the note F for trumpets and E flat for low brass. Da, da, do, re, mi, fa, so, fa, mi, re, do. It should sound identical to before, but higher in pitch. If you do not use the new first finger for B flat or third position for A flat trombones, you would get 
da 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 And we'll have a slightly different sound because that fourth note will sound a bit too high. So uh, play through that. Front page, really easy. Hot cross buns, you can do that, no problem. Back page, when you're going up the whole octave, you're now going to need um, high D for trumpet, first finger, high E for trumpet, and high F, first finger. We know the ingredients for playing high notes. So even if you've never played up to a high F before, build up step by step, add on the high D, then add on the high E, then add on the high F. Do it one by one over a number of days to build up your strength and control. Tense lips, fast air, clear tonguing. If you're getting those three things, you will develop the control over those notes. For trombones, you guys are now gonna be going up to high E flat at the top of your E flat major scale. E flat, uh, what should I do? Trombones. Third, first, fourth, third, first, just the same as the five note scale. Then back out to third position for high C, first position for high D, and third position for high E flat. Lots of threes and ones, uh, you'll be fine. Play the eight note scale, build it up over a number of days, really control your notes and maintain a beautiful sound. Playing around, exactly the same tune, but now using uh, the notes from our new E flat or F major scale, depending on what instrument you play. Da, 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 da. And I've added in some slurs to make it a little bit uh, trickier than just changing notes. Good. Harmonic minor, melodic minor, minor arpeggio. Those things will have moved as well. For trumpet players, we know that if we're in the key of F major, F is note number one, to find the evil twin, the relative minor, you need to work out what note number six is. F, G, A, B flat, C, D. So take the notes of your F major scale, play them starting on a D instead, and that gives you the relative minor, D minor. Um, to make it sound snake charmery for the harmonic minor version, you would sharpen the seventh note of that scale. D, E, F, G, A, B, C becomes C sharp, and then high D. Here's the weird thing. Uh, low brass players will have hit this problem already. For the melodic minor, when you sharpen the sixth note and the seventh note, it's gonna get a bit weird. F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. Hang on, what are we in? That was F major. D, E, F, G, A, B flat is note number six. What do you get if you sharpen a flat note? It just goes back to natural again. So instead of B flat, you're going back to that second valve B natural, then high C sharp, and then high D. I probably confused you there. Um, write them in, you'll be fine. Then the arpeggio is the same. What is the purpose of all this? You've watched like 10 minutes of me talking and going through the theory behind it. What is the purpose? The purpose is that, number one, you gradually learn to understand by playing these exercises and then playing the technical repertoire packs that go along with them. Here's step two, technical repertoire that all the future videos for the next couple of weeks will be uh, working from. You learn that you can play the same song with a variety of different notes. And as long as you know what notes are in your major or minor scale, all of the pieces that I've chosen from you, um, you're gonna be able to make these work. You could even take a song that was originally in your step one key, so trumpet players, that would be in the key of C major, and you could even transpose it, which means you move it, so that it uses the notes of step two, which is F major. If you wanna get really technical, all you do is move them up four steps and make sure you change your flat. Once again, I've probably lost you by now. That's okay. Um, you'll work it out with practice. So, songs can be played in a variety of keys. There are 12 of them. We're only on step two out of those. The other purpose for this that's been really useful um, in a range of musical situations that I've been in, anytime you're playing with singers, whether it's you or someone else who's doing the singing, you're gonna find you have to move songs around you're going to have to transpose them higher or lower to suit your singer's voice. That is why with some of the jazz tunes like Fly Me to the Moon, we learned that in the step one pack in our key of C major for trumpet, B flat for trombone, but it's not normally in that key. I moved it to be in that key to make it easier for us to learn. Um, we could have learned it in its more common usual key, um, but there's no point because depending on who's singing for you or what other instruments are in your band, that's gonna determine which of the other 11 keys you're gonna be playing the song in. So the end goal is to be fluent in all 12 keys, 
You've learned a song in one key, you want to be able to move it into any other key. And that means knowing scales and being able to play them well. There are probably other good educational reasons for this, but basically you need to be able to play a whole bunch of scales. The purpose isn't that you can play scales, though that is helpful when you're reading and learning new music. The purpose is that you are comfortable in music that is handed to you in any of these keys. That's kind of the end goal here. So, take your Seagull Scales Step 1 sheet, play through it, it should be pretty straightforward. Find the Seagull Scales Step 2 sheet available in the resources section of my website. Resources, continuing students, press the button. Seagull Scales and Sheets, press the button. And find the Step 2 uh, Seagull scale sheet. That will take you through the basics F major scale, starting with five notes and then building it up for trumpets. E flat major scale, starting with five notes and building it up for low brass. And then everything in this technical repertoire pack, which looks, where are we? That's just the front page. Um, that looks really kind of complex. A lot of it is so much easier because you've mastered the notes already and the patterns. These songs were chosen because they feature the scale and the triad and the arpeggio patterns. So you should be able to make those work using your usual strategies. Break it down into little bits, clap, sing, play, go slow, then build up the speed. All of that stuff that you will have had me talking to you and practicing in class with you for years now. I hope you've been taking notes so you only have to ever have to watch this video once. You should know how to find the evil twin, the relative minor from a major scale. You should know how to turn that into harmonic minor, the snake charmer sound, or melodic minor, the one that's one way on the way up and another way on the way down. Um, and you should be able to turn any of these scales into arpeggios. And by that stage, you should be able to play all of these songs. I can't wait to hear the videos of you putting these things into action. And one day when I finally get to see you again in real life, I'm gonna quiz you on this and we're gonna find out who actually took notes and memorized what we've been talking about today and who didn't. No pressure, enjoy.